What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. Over the last several months, I have made exactly three different video chat applications using the WebRTC technology on my channel. So in other words, I've made videos about creating WebRTC video chat applications. Now, the one thing that I didn't handle in every single one of those videos and all three of those videos was what happens when somebody leaves the call, right? So you're currently in the middle of having a video chat with somebody and then your partner goes and leaves the call. How do you handle that? What do you now do? So if you actually use my code for any one of those you know, video chat applications, what's gonna ultimately end up happening is the video tag of your partner when they left will just be frozen, which is of course a really sort of bad experience. And I know that this has kind of been bothering you, uh, many of you, because I've actually been getting this question in my comments quite a lot, like, hey, Chaim, how do we actually deal with the disconnect event? So the plan right now is for me to over the next couple of weeks to actually go ahead and handle the disconnect event for each one of these projects. So in this week's video, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take the actual one-on-one -on -one video chat using the Simple Peer Library. This is the very first WebRTC video chat application uh, that I've ever built, and it's the first video about WebRTC that I actually ever uploaded on the channel. We're going to go ahead and take that very project, and we're now going to go ahead and handle the actual disconnect event within that very project. Now, of course, if you'd like to follow along, the code to that final video chat application will be down in the description box below. Of course, the final code of that product, or that video rather, will be the starting code for this particular video. So if you wanna follow along, just grab that from GitHub. The link again will be down in the description box below and we'll be good to go. So with that introduction out of the way, let's get to coding. Okay, so let's take a look at the server.js file that exists within our project. And as you can see, we're already handling the disconnect event right over here. You'll see that we already have socketed on disconnect and that all we're really doing right now is we're going to this users collection that we have here and we're simply saying delete users of socket.id. ID. So in other words, this user that we currently just got, the one that has the current ID, the one that's currently disconnecting, just take this user out of the users collection. But this, this, of course, doesn't really help us because this event is not actually sending anything back to the client. Therefore, the client doesn't really have a proper way of handling this event of saying, okay, somebody left, let me do something. Let me change the UI. Let me get rid of this pair. Let me do something. But none of that's really happening, right? So let's actually go ahead and handle that right now. Okay, so the only thing that we kind of really need to do to our actual server file here in this project is we just need to add the line that I just added on line 17 that basically says socket.broadcast.emit user left. Pretty much what this does, the socket.broadcast.emit method, what it's going to do is pretty much going to emit an event to all the other connected clients except for the sender. Now, what's really neat about this is that in this particular case, we're only gonna really have the two people that are connected at once because that's all this really handles. So that's why this is gonna be sufficient. In other words, and it's sort of more advanced advanced uh, um, project like the other ones that we have where we kind of have the group video chat or later on we're using the native WebRTC, this alone won't be sufficient and we'll get to that soon. But for this simple WebRTC uh, video chat that I made all the way to the beginning, this is going to be enough where we're pretty much just going to tell all the connected clients except for myself that I'm leaving. And this is going to be okay because the only other connected client is going to be my partner because again, we only just have the simple one-on-one -on -one video chat and we don't even have the concept of rooms. We just have two people that are connected at once and that's all that this really supports. Okay, so moving on to the actual app file that exists within the client folder in the source folder, there's a file called app, and this is going to be pretty much housing all of our clients at code that relates to this WebRTC video chat application. And one of the things I wanna point out right off the bat is that you'll notice that this partner video variable here, this pretty much relates to the partner video tag. And you'll notice that we're only rendering that conditionally on the condition that the call has been accepted, which means that only so long we're currently in a video chat, and we're so long, so long as we're actually in a call right now, that's where we're actually gonna go ahead and see the other person who we're in the video chat with, we're gonna have their tag, their video tag up, and we're gonna go ahead and receive their stream which means all we really need to do kind of to kind of end this call is to set this call accepted variable in state back to false. So now the simple way to do that would be since we now have this event that we're sending to ourselves from the server saying that somebody left, when we listen out for that event in the clients at code, all we really need to do now is go ahead and take this call accepted and then kind of set it back to false. And that's gonna go ahead and remove that video tag out of the DOM and then the call is basically going to be ended. That being said, there's still a little bit more cleanup that's gonna to have to be done. And I'm gonna show you all this code right now. Okay, so as you can see, we're now in our use effect. And here you have this event that we're listening out for, the one that we just sent ourselves from the server, the user left event. And here is where we're pretty much doing our basic cleanup. So one of the things that we're doing is we're saying set receiving call to false. Now this one really should have probably been handled when we're actually accepting the call. So you can kind of ignore this one for now, although I do have it here just so it doesn't look weird. Basically what happens is when you're actually receiving a call, we get a little indication that says that somebody's actually calling you. Now, foolishly, what I made a mistake was when somebody actually goes and accepts that call, I didn't set that signal back to false. So even when you're already in the middle of the call, you're still being told that you're getting a call. But I figured at least now when we're actually going and we're cleaning up the phone call entirely or the video call entirely when somebody leaves, Let's at least remove that indication, at least now, when somebody is actually leaving the chat. Although to be fair, that should have happened when the call was actually accepted. We're then sending the caller back to false or to just do an empty string. 
We then set in call accepted to false. Now, again, this is the one that's actually going to make our JSX no longer render the partner video, which is, of course, going to be important. We're then taking this users collection that we have up in state, and we're setting it back to an empty object, which is going to be very important because as you see down here, we actually iterate over this users collection in our JSX. And then for each one, except for our own, we're basically going to have, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a button that basically says we can call the other person. Now, of course, once the other person kind of left the server, they're no longer connected to our server, we no longer want to have that button to actually go ahead and say that we can call them. So one of the things we need to do is kind of come back to this actual uh, event when somebody's leaving and take this user's collection and set it back to an empty object. Finally, we actually have to go to our actual peer object that we're getting from symbol peer, and we have to go ahead and call this destroy method to kind of clean up any and all connections that it might have had and just kind of remove it from the DOM entirely, or rather remove it from the browser entirely, from memory. So now because this peer object here in the call peer function and then the peer object here in the accept call function are scoped individually only to those functions and I don't actually have access to them anywhere else within the actual component, but since I need them, I need to have access to them here because I have to be able to actually go ahead and call prf.current.destroy. I need to have a way of actually going to destroy that peer. So what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to just going to create a simple um, peer or ref for us here that we can then attach that peer object to that ref so that we can then access it anywhere within our component and then we, in our event when somebody is actually leaving the chat we can then go ahead and take that particular peer object and we can destroy it. Okay, so as you can see, all I've done here is I'm saying const peer ref is equal to use ref. And then down here inside of my call peer function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this peer object that we are now creating and I'm going to assign it to my ref. The same thing is going to happen in the accept call function. I'm going to go ahead and say peer ref dot current is equal to peer. And so now because that is done, I now in my event here have access to say peer after current that destroy. And then if all goes to plan, we should actually have the ability to actually leave the video chat gracefully. So let's test this now. Okay, so in order to run this application, you're going to want to have two terminals open. The first terminal will be pointed to the sort of root of the application, which in this case will just be simple peer video, uh, video chat. We're going to go ahead and say node server.js. We're then going to have another terminal open. This one's going to be pointing to simple peer video chat um, slash client. And this one, we're going to go ahead and say yarn start. This is going to go ahead and bring up the actual client application on local host 3000. And then we can actually go ahead and set up a call and then try to leave the call and see that it all works as planned. Okay, so now there's currently nobody connected except for myself, of course. There's only one tab open. So as you can see, we don't have any buttons to kind of call somebody else. Let's grab this URL. Let's open up a new tab and paste it in. And as you can see, now we have two people connected and each one of these people has a button to kind of call the other person. Let's just go ahead and click on this button that we're calling, some, we're calling the other person. We're gonna have to wait a minute. I'm not entirely sure why this has been taking longer than I remember taking. But in any event, now we have this sort of gibberish socket ID telling you that someone is calling you. We then go ahead and hit the accept button. And now we actually have a video chat application working, right? So now we're, we're connected and we're in a video call. We have two people connected to each other and they can now have a proper chat over video using WebRTC. Now, Let's go ahead and just close one of these tabs. And as you can see, it's all disconnected. We no longer have the button that says we're calling somebody. We no longer have the button to call somebody. There's not a second video tag that's hanging. It's all been cleaned up. It's all been destroyed. And of course, I can then once again, go ahead and open up a new tab, repaste the URL, once again, get this button, make a call, come back to the first tab now, wait for this sort of message to tell me that I'm being called. When that shows up, I'll click on it. There we go, accept. And now we're back in a proper working video chat. And then we can close this tab down and we're back to a state of being out of the video chat. It's all working as planned. Well, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. Perfect.